Welcome to God's Word Fellowship. I'm Gerald Santiago and we are studying about praying for kings and those in authority. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for your holy written word. Father, your words are truth. Father, heaven and earth will pass away, but your words will never pass away. Father, we thank you so much for your ways and your wisdom. Father, your ways produce good fruit, great fruit. Hallelujah to Jesus. Father, your words produce the results that you have promised in your word. Father, we thank you so much for your mighty Holy Spirit. Father, we pray you teach us your word. Father, we pray you grant us wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and revelation in your word, your will, and your love. Father, we pray you grant us ideas, concepts, and insights. Father, we pray you show us great and mighty things that we do not know. Father, we pray you show us wonderful things out of your word. Father, we thank you for word in due season. Father, we thank you for answer and solutions and father we pray you stretch out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus and father we pray for our nation India for our states our cities and our local areas father we pray for your great mercy upon them and father you are love you are great in love you are full of compassion Father, you are abounding in goodness and father we pray that you stretch out your mighty right hand according to your great love according to your great mercy and bring about a marvelous deliverance from the coronavirus a permanent solution father father we thank you for your mighty deliverance father you are so good so great and so awesome father nothing is impossible for you and father we thank you so much for your mighty deliverance for our nation from the coronavirus and father by the authority of your word in the name of Jesus coronavirus die and be destroyed in the name of Jesus we bind the works of the devil behind the coronavirus in the name of Jesus let every scheme every plan every device every weapon of the devil behind the coronavirus be broken and destroyed in the name of Jesus let life blossom in the name of Jesus life prevail in the name of Jesus life mightily prevail and father we thank you so much you helped us father we thank Thank you for your marvelous help. Father, you are glorious. You are great in power. Father, nothing is impossible for you. Father, we thank you so much for your help for us. And Father, we pray for your blessing upon our nation. Father, we pray you bless our land and bless our people. Father, we pray for your peace upon our country. Father, let all the chaos and the disorder and this um, lack of peace be remote hallelujah to jesus father let your peace prevail over our nation father let your peace permeate into every part of our country hallelujah to jesus hallelujah to jesus father let churches be opened let ministries function without any stifling regulations and father let um jobs businesses industries companies and all sorts of businesses be opened again and father we pray that schools colleges and universities be opened again father we pray for your great mercy upon our people father let normal life be restored back again and father you are able and nothing is impossible for you Father, we thank you so much for your glorious help for us. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. I encourage you to pray for our nation on a daily basis. It's so very important. It's so very important that we who do, Christians and those of us who know how to pray stand in faith. Right? We need to stand in faith so that we can move forward. We cannot be stuck in this kind of a twilight zone all the time. Hmm? You are not there, you are not here. You go into that part a little bit and then go back again. Nah, we are not doing that. We need to stay in faith, we need to look to God and we need to keep moving forward. Right? In our personal lives, yes, which we are doing, but we also need to use our faith for our nation. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah to Jesus. All right, then let's go to our text today. Go with me to First um, Timothy chapter two, verse one. The last few weeks we have been studying about praying for kings and those in authority. Verse one: I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority. Notice the Bible says first of all. Right, we already said in the previous week in the Greek, it means first in rank, position, time, place. Right, it means before, before other things. It means chiefly. Right, so this prayer that we pray for kings and those in authority is of prime importance in the eyes of God. God puts a lot of premium on this. God values this prayer a lot. So this should be on the top of our prayer list, praying for kings and those in authority. Did you get that? Hallelujah to Jesus. All right, let's keep reading. Why? Why is God saying that we should do this number one? Right. Um, all right. Verse two again. For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Right? God wants the body of Christ to be able to live a quiet life, a peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Right? See, you know, Paul faced a lot of persecution. <laughs> Right, and the history teaches us that it was Nero, right, a king who falsely accused the Christians of setting Rome in fire and then killed Paul. Right, he understands that Paul, if you study the life of Paul, he understands what it means to be persecuted for his Christian faith. Right, and he was led by the Holy Ghost all the time, all the time, all the time. And uh, here, and he faced a lot of kings, a <laughs> lot of authorities in his life. And here, by the Holy Spirit, he is writing to the church a solution. A solution to be able to practice their uh, Christian faith in peace, in quiet, in all godliness and honesty. Do you understand this? Yeah. Verse 3. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. So on one hand, it enables the body of Christ, right, and all the ministries and the churches to function in peace and quiet, right? And the other benefit is that it is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth, right? So, on the, the second benefit is that this is very important for the spreading of the gospel, for preaching Jesus to unbelievers. You know, that is God's number one desire that people need to be saved. Right? He doesn't want his precious souls to go down into hell. No, he wants people to come to him. Right? So, that the... <laughs> Praying for kings and those in authority will facilitate the preaching of the gospel and the salvation of the unbelievers, salvation of the lost. Now, if, if you are interested in getting people saved, this is one prayer you should be doing. You know, I pray for the salvation of uh, the people of my country and even other nations quite a bit. Right? And, uh, you know, because that, 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 that's the desire of God. That's how the kingdom of God expands. That's how, you know, people, people's eternity will be saved. Right? So, we, we, we want to be doing that, right? But, we also need to remember that this prayer, praying for kings and those in authority, facilitates the preaching of the gospel and the salvation of unbelievers. Do you understand that? Yeah? Today we are going to look at some biblical examples of how the decisions of kings and those in authority affected God's people, right, and nations. We are going to look at that from the Bible, right? 
and uh, so that you realize the kind of uh, uh, influence kings and those in authority have and why it is so important to pray for them right hallelujah first of all we are going to look at king david now, this this is a great guy now, now we will look at some bad characters later right? but this is a great guy I mean you don't get better than this this is David the man after God's own heart and this man is a man of prayer and if anybody knows how to pray it would be David isn't it he's a man of prayer he's a man who sought God he's a man of the Word of God and man who loved God and loved God's people, this is a great man. And if, if you want anybody to be a king, you want King David to be a king, right? So, so th th this is a great guy, right? I mean, p people would be praying to receive a guy like this. Awesome guy. Now, look at what happened in his life you know we, we we know king david was a great ruler right he administered justice for his people he he fought wars for his people successfully protected his people and um, he was a great ruler right and he was wise he was capable he was just he was kind and merciful to people he loved god he served god i mean this is the kind of guy who, who people dream of right hey, if he had a king like that right so <laughs> Let's look at uh, an incident that happened in David's life. Verse 1. Uh, I'm sorry, did I give you the verse? I'm in chapter. First Chronicles, chapter 21 and verse 1. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. It's interesting. Notice the Bible did not say, and Satan stood up against David. So this attack was not towards David right this attack was against Israel so the devil wanted to hurt the people of Israel so notice he didn't go to the people of Israel directly instead he went to the king see why see if he has to hurt the people in people he would have to work something out you know which hurts people individually or he has to go for something massive you know it's, it's difficult but if he could get the king to do something wrong right then <laughs> the decision of the king the action of the king would impact the whole nation see that's the thing with kings and those in authority you know in our lives when we make a decision when we do something wrong or right it would affect us personally or it may affect our family or whatever is under our influence you know maybe our ministry maybe our church maybe our job or maybe our business maybe the people who are employed under us you know those are the things that would get affected but when a king of a nation or a leader of a nation is affected he is influenced by the devil and he makes a wrong decision it would um, impact the whole nation whether it is a small nation or a big nation it is going to impact everybody right do you understand this and in a country like us we have more than a billion people right in the, the, the decision the, the the impact of the decision of the leaders of our nation is huge do you see this hallelujah hallelujah to Jesus and there are other nations which are depending on us right and they will get impacted did this the, the the responsibility upon our leaders is humongous it's big capital letter bold neon sign big right so let's keep looking at this um, verse 1 and Satan stood up against Israel and he did what he provoked David to number Israel notice he went to the king and he provoked David to number Israel 
Verse 2, And David said to Joab and to the rulers of the people, Go and number Israel for Beersheba, from Beersheba even to Dan, and bring the number of them to me that I may know it. So notice, you know, if you study the Old Testament, there is an express commandment against doing this. You know, God wants His people, His kings and the entire nation to lean and trust in Him. He doesn't want them to be leaning on the numbers, number of soldiers or, or number of, you know, the size of the army, the capacity of the army. No, God wanted His people to trust in Him. Right? And there is an express commandment against this. David knows this. But somehow in his weakness, in a state of weakness, he is yielding to the devil here. Right? Look at verse 3. And Job answered, The Lord make his people an hundred times so many more as they be. But my Lord the King, are they not all my Lord's servants? Why then does my Lord require this thing? Why will he cause uh, why will he be a cause of trespass to Israel? See Job also knows this and he is giving David good counsel here. He's saying <laughs> right? God bless you, God bless the nation, but you know this will bring a sin upon your people, upon Israel. So why do this? In verse 4, nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab. You know, one of the things that you need to be praying for a king is that God would surround the leaders of our nation with uh, good people, wise, God-fearing people. Because the people around uh, the king in many ways determine the kind of decisions the king makes. Do you understand that? You remember the guy named Ahithophel? Right? Actually a great guy. He was wise. But in fact, the Bible says his counsel was like the counsel of God Almighty himself. It's like a prophecy when that man speaks. He was just amazingly wise. What he says happens. What he, the counsel that he gives works all the time. King David, you know, he is a wise man himself who hears the voice of God all the time. Right? King David knows God. King David is familiar with God. King David is wise and he can hear the voice of God. Yet he had somebody like Ahithophel as his counselor. Right? And even Absalom respected the counsel of Ahithophel the same way. Right, and we will look at you know Ahithophel later, you know, but I'm just giving you this guy Ahithophel later turned, joined Absalom, and turned against David. But I want you, I just want to show you the value of um, counsel, good counsel, right? If you go and study the life of David, David not only had Ahithophel, he had people like Nathan, he had people like Dan, prophets who were counselors for him, right? He had good people around him, people like Benania and Joab in this case. Right? He had good counselors, good people around him. That's very important. That's one of the things that you want to be praying for kings and those in authority. I'm going a little ahead of myself. Actually, we will deal with this separately when we are in one of the messages because this is so important. The kind of people that you have, uh, that, that a king has around him. Right? Very, very important. So you should be praying that God would surround uh, the, the leaders of our country with wise, God-fearing and able people. Right? That God would remove uh, the wicked from their presence. Right? And God would defeat ungodly, wicked, foolish counsels. You understand that? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That should be one of the main things that we pray for kings and those in authority. Alright, now here in this case, the king overruled the good counsel that Joab gave. 
wherefore job departed and went throughout all his royal and came to jerusalem so job you know he does this unwillingly right it was just abominable in his sight if in fact if you read he goes and um, counts the number of people in various um, tribes you know there were 12 tribes in israel but he would leave out levi and benjamin right because this this was just disgusting in the eyes of job and uh, not only in the eyes of job more importantly it was disgusting in the eyes of god verse 7 and god was displeased with this thing therefore he smote israel the judgment of god came upon israel you know the devil does this all the time right he would he, you know when he cannot hurt the nation of uh, israel directly he provokes them to sin so that the judgment of god would come upon them this is not the f- first time he is doing this you remember in numbers um the king of moab would hire balaam to come against israel and uh, ba- <laughs> right you know moab or ammon or any other nation couldn't defeat israel in a battlefield because god almighty was fighting alongside with them and um, israel was just beating everybody any nation that they came against israel was winning and moab knew that he did not stand a chance so what did he do he hired um balaam a prophet to come and curse israel and this guy was a greedy man so he went actually <laughs> even though even the god from the beginning had told him not to go right he would go again and again to god because he was greedy for the uh, money that um, they were bringing <laughs> right i'm just just want to keep this story short because you know we have things to talk about so anyway this prophet goes there and he he, he you know he tells the king you know i know you hired me but i cannot say anything and everything that i wish i can speak only what god tells me to speak so he offered sacrifices in different places and every time god would speak a blessing instead of a curse so balaam knows that he cannot go against god in fact an angel appeared to him on the way and was about to kill him this prophet was saved by a donkey <laughs> you would think a prophet would know better than that right but this guy was so greedy that his eyes was blinded and he, right? a donkey had to save this guy right so but by god's permission he would come and um, uh, you know uh, speak the words that god almighty gave him so uh, he would uh, tell moab uh, the king of moab I, i i can't curse this people right but then because he was so greedy for money he would give them a vile advice he would tell the king of moab hey you can't defeat them in battle and i cannot curse them but uh, you can do something you send your women to seduce them right and uh, influence seduce them to commit fornication and cause them to do idolatry and if you can get them to do that the judgment of god will come upon them right you won't have to hurt them the judgment of god will come upon them right so this is a strategy that the devil has been using for quite some time if he cannot f- defeat people in battle in, in a straight battle he would use this trick tempt them to do something that is displeasing to god and bring judgment upon the nation but we understand that right or even in individuals life this is a trick that the devil uses and we should be aware of the strategies of the devil now look at this god was displeased with this thing and therefore he smote israel verse 8 and david said unto god i have sinned greatly <laughs> and one thing about david is quick to repent he, he is not a stubborn fellow right he, he is just quick to repent so he repents because i have done this thing but now i beseech thee do away with the iniquity of the, your servant for i have done very foolishly right that's humility isn't it this guy he know he has messed up and he repents just speedily and you should be very quick to repent it's a noble thing right if you have done something bad you should just be quick to repent verse 9 the lord spake unto gad david seer, seer saying 
Go and tell David, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I offer thee three things. Choose one of them, that I may do it unto thee. So Gad came to David and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Choose thee three years of a mine, or three months to be destroyed before your foes, while that while that the sword of your enemies overtake thee, or else three days the sword of the Lord, even the pestilence in the land, and the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the coasts of Israel. Now therefore advise yourself that word, what word I shall bring again to him that sent me. David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait. This is a hard choice. <laughs> There's going to be a problem anyway, <laughs> right? It's just the kind of problem and the degree of problem, right? It's it's a big problem, no matter which one he chooses. But he makes a wise decision, and I I would want you to pay attention to this, right? This is so very important. Look at the kind of understanding David had about God. He said, "Let me fall now into the hand of the Lord, for every." I mean, for very great are his mercies. But let me not fall into the hand of man. He's saying, let me fall into the hand of God because I know something about God. God's mercy is great. God is great in mercy. So if I fall into the hands of God, I know he will have mercy upon me. Right? And you would notice that later that God would actually you know, feel bad for Israel and stop, <laughs> ask the angel to stop. And David would offer a sacrifice, right? And God would um, have mercy upon Israel and stop the pestilence in one day instead of three days. Right? So see, that, that's why David wisely chose, let me fall into the hands of God. Right? Hallelujah. But I want you to look at something else. The impact of the decision of David. Look at this. Verse 14. So the Lord sent pestilence upon Israel, and there fell of Israel 70,000 men. 70,000 people. Right? 70,000. Think about that. And if it, if it had continued for a couple of more days, <laughs> boy, right? We, we talk about uh, <laughs> you know, great impact of 200 people die, 300 people die, or 1,000 die. The 70,000 people perished in a day. Think about that. Hmm? This is this big number, isn't it? And why did this happen? Yes, of course, the devil came against them and provoked David. But I want you to understand, because of a decision the king of the country made. Look at the impact of the decision of a king. Do you see this? And that's why praying for kings and those in authority is number one. It should not be in the last in the list. It should not be something that we do if we have time. Now, this should be number one in our list. Did you get this? Hallelujah. We will look at more more things in the coming, coming weeks, right? We will study more about praying for kings and those in authority. I want to leave you with this question. If someone like King David can be influenced to make a bad decision like this, how much more the kind of kings and leaders we have today? We, they need our prayers. They really need our prayers. And God has promised us, whether they are believers or unbelievers, if we would pray, God will hear our prayers and influence them to lead our country in a wise way, in a godly way. Do you understand this? Hallelujah to Jesus. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. Please make a note of our WhatsApp number. It's 994428332. Um, also make a note of our email address. It's prayer at gwfindia.in. 
please do send us your prayer request or email address or to our uh, whatsapp number we will believe god along with you god will do awesome things for you and uh, please do send us your testimonies of how god is working in your life through this ministry we love to hear that we will praise god along with you and your testimonies will inspire other believers to believe god hallelujah and um, those of you who want to send offerings to this ministry or become a partner in this ministry visit our website gwfindia.in click on the donate tab and you will have several options through which you can send your finances god will honor you for that you know when you when you are sending money to us you are, you are investing in god's work and god will bless you for that god will increase you and multiply you and god will meet all your needs according to his riches in glory by christ jesus thank you so much for listening god bless you jesus is coming soon